Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to A Short Stop on Pool. When I began this Rack of the Week video series, I mentioned that most of the racks would be played by me, but I would include some racks that were played by professional players. And I would also include some racks where I failed to run the rack. A subscriber recently reminded me of that fact. And so this week, we're going to have a rack that doesn't go so well, and I make some mistakes, and those are going to be educational as well. So let's get into the rack. This video was recorded about a year and a half ago. This is a few weeks before I ran 124 on this table uh, for my book. And here I'm shooting pretty fast and loose. I wasn't necessarily trying to set a high run, and that's why the camera angle's off to the side. And here you're going to see what I now refer to as my old fundamentals. My head's about 10 to 12 inches above the cue. My shoulders sticking out, both knees are bent. You'll see me rising up on some shots. My bridge is too long on a lot of shots, but regardless, you see me shooting my favorite side of the rack break shot here, and I'm really trying to open the rack. I'm trying to hammer this, but I don't make a decision about whether I want to draw the ball or stun it or what I'm going to do, and that is reflected in the results. The cue ball near an upper corner pocket is definitely not where you want it to stop after a break shot. I've got a bit of a cluster in the rack area. It looks like I might have a potential break shot on the 11, but I'm not sure. But my only shot is a back cut on the 14 ball, and I'm really lucky to have that. I take a look, and I'm not going to scratch in the side pocket, but other than that, your guess is as good as mine is where this cue ball is going. I'm putting all of my efforts into simply pocketing the ball so I can continue the rack. That's a pretty good result considering the circumstances. I made an extra ball and I have an easy 3-9 combination. So I take a look at the rack area. I'm going to play position to shoot the 6 ball next. There's really nothing wrong with that so far. So I've got a nice angle on the 6 and I'm going to hit the 3 or the 1. And I think my intention was to stun forward off from those balls. Kind of loosen them up a bit and stun forward to have a shot on that 2 ball. Which doesn't quite work out. I don't really have a lot of fault with this so far. I hit the 11, but it's still a good break shot. I've got a pretty thin cut on the two, but then I've got an easy shot on this stripe ball on the side, which leads to position on the remaining rack area balls. And that's an easy shot, so let's just bend down and shoot it and miss the shot. That is what I refer to in straight pool as a failure point. When you're practicing straight pool, you should uh, keep track of your failure points, but not only where you fail, but why. And I'm making a note of that. That's a great topic for a video in the future is failure points and how to deal with them. You want to have data to take back to the practice table where you can shoot drills to try and correct the issues that lead to your failure points. In this case, while there's really nothing wrong with shooting fast and loose at times, there's a big difference between that and shooting fast and careless, which was pretty much my issue here. I didn't take even a half a second of time to line up the shot before I got down and started shooting. And that's an error in aiming. Which reminds me, be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to my channel because I've got a video coming up soon called How to Aim. Now I'm gonna shoot this side pocket shot over. I'm gonna take a mulligan. And that's something I encourage for players trying to learn straight pool. It can be kind of self-defeating if you miss early in a rack and you gotta rack the balls and break again. Now you don't wanna be taking mulligans all the time, 10 times during a rack. If, but everybody misses. And so once a rack, if you reset a shot and challenge yourself to say, okay, if I didn't miss that shot, would I have been able to complete this rack? That kind of practice, along with recording your failure points to work on later, can turn an emotionally defeating failure point into something positive and encouraging. So by taking that mulligan, I've got the opportunity to now to see if I can close out this rack. I see two general choices in how to approach this rack. One would be to clear all of the lower table balls and then go get that stripe up table and use the eight ball as my key ball for the break shot. The other way would be to get those up table balls as soon as possible, leaving as many balls down table as I can to maneuver onto my break shot. Now I want to shoot the seven ball next because that creates more opportunities for getting to the one and the 11. And what I notice is that I'm dead straight and I can draw back for position on the eight ball on the side. So I'm going with the latter choice. After clearing these two up table balls, my next shot has to be the three ball. First of all, because that opens up the pocket for the nine. 
and also because it's a very easy shot to play position on. But that's also true because I drew back a little bit on the eight to give myself an angle on this stripe ball to bounce off the rail and get back down table. Let's take a closer look at this five ball end pattern. You're going to find similar situations occurring somewhat frequently. Obviously the 15 ball is my break shot. The 11, 1, or 2 all could possibly function as a key ball. None of them are ideal. The 9 ball is a terrible key ball, and so that's something I want to shoot early. I don't have access to the 1 ball in either corner pocket. There's a very small position zone to try and get on that 1. But the 11 ball is a great pivot ball, or I like to say a key ball, for the 1. A stop shot on the 11 in the side, and I'm on the 1. So when I shoot the three ball, I want to make sure I come in straight or past straight in. Because if I come past, I still have the opportunity to play position for either the one or the nine ball. This means that my pattern is either going to be 311, 192, or 311, 912. As it worked out, I got real close to straight in on that 11, and I think it's easier to go from the 9 ball to the 2 ball, and it's harder to shoot the 9 and get just the right angle on the 1 to go to the 2, so I'm shooting 11 one, nine. This is a pretty good angle on the 9 ball, but I don't take the time right here to decide what angle I want to get on the two. There are three ways to play position on this break ball. One is to get an angle to cut the two ball and go straight up table. Another is to get the angle to go forward two rails, which is my preferred route. And then the third one, which is kind of a recovery key ball shot, that would be if you land pretty close to straight in and you need to draw back two rails to get on the break shot. And because I don't take the time to decide before shooting the nine ball, I'm sure you can guess which angle I get. Because I'm shooting fast and loose this rack, I pretty much just get right down. I don't even go look at what angle I need or how far I need to draw this ball. And for that reason, I end up real short on the break shot for the next rack. My body is in the way of this break shot, but I actually don't hit the rack with the cue ball, and I do hit the rack with my cue stick. Let's watch that shot again in slow motion. This is a failure of stroke delivery. The shoulder position and the elbow drop causes my grip hand to twist to the left when I stroke the ball. And this type of issue is what led me to my current journey of improving my fundamentals and my stroke delivery. That's going to come up in a future video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found that informative and helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Check out my book, A Short Stop on Straight Pool. You can find it at shortstoponpool.com. And stay tuned for next week's Rack of the Week.